Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Genshin Impact Hangout Events. In the last episode, we finished the Farazon's Hangout Events, and Lynette's Hangout Events was very aptly timed. It came out not long after I finished up editing Farazon, so before we get into the videos and the schedule I talked about at the end of the last episode, we're going to do Lynette's Hangout Events. I have plenty of content planned for after her Hangout Events, but since this came out so promptly, we're going to do this first. Um, I am quite, I am a little excited about it because I do love Lynette. She, she is an absolute peach. I adore her. So I am pretty excited about doing these. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try not to be as lazy with the editing on these as I have been in the past with the hangout events. I'm trying, I'm going to try my best not to be as lazy. I'm gonna try my best. Um, and I feel like that mainly includes, um, Cutting out those sections where we're just right waiting around uh, while I'm running to the next area or yada yada yada. I'm going to try to cut it down a little bit. Maybe that'll help with the videos being so long as well. But, um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do Lynette's. I can't see my mouse. This is inconvenient. <laughs> Lynette's, Lynette. I can't see my mouse, so I'm just like hoping I mouse over the button because I don't know where my mouse is. Why can I not see my mouse? Okay, there we go. There we go. I could not see my mouse for a second there. I know you guys can't see it regardless, but I couldn't see my mouse there. Jacks and cats. Let's see. There you go. Now go the war. All right. Let's go find Lynette. Let's go find Lynette. Lynette. Hello, my darling. Is that Lynette with a little kitty? Seems like it. Meow. Meow. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's let's not let's creep up on her. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> oh, it's you. One second. Now activating chat mode. <laughs> I when love he jumped there, I thought they'd finally caught me. Is someone out to kidnap you? Do I need to beat someone up? Because I will! Objectively speaking, the trouble was entirely of my own making. Uh? Half an hour ago, I was at Hotel de Boer for a drinks reception. It was to celebrate the successful opening of a show. But it was draining my energy. So, I waited for the right moment, then snuck away so I could switch to standby mode. Ah, understandable. Social battery got drained. I see. So they sent someone to find you and bring you back? But why? Um, probably because I'm playing the lead role in the show. Hmm. Is that so surprising? I'm always getting invitations to do solo performances. I just usually get Linny to write back and turn them down. <laughs> but then came the Fontanalia Film Festival. We took all the kids from the House of the Hearth out to see a film, and after it finished, they all started clamoring for me to try out acting for some reason. Even Linny was chanting along with them. <laughs> Linny. Anyway, it just so happened that a director called Mary who had sent me an invitation right around then. I'll spare you the details, but basically, I ended up accepting it. So this is the dramatic debut of the magician's puppet, huh? Yep, you nailed it. I'm playing the role of a puppet. In fact, the show's called The Lost Puppet, and it's a masked mime show. So, I don't have to do any facial expressions or say any lines. Literally just a series of physical movements. The director says it's a very avant-garde art form. <laughs> avant-garde! Does sound pretty avant-garde. But can people understand the plot? Art is not comprehended by the mind, but felt in the heart. At least, that's what the director says. Mm. Anyway, if nothing else, the opening performance seemed to go down well. At the drinks reception, everyone was crowding around me, saying, Triumphant character portrayal. Faithful adaptation of the original work. Unequivocally, quintessentially avant-garde. And stuff like that. Lots of big words. But being the center of attention is draining. So, the moment they left me to go harass the director instead, I was out of there. 
<laughs> For once, you weren't able to use Linny as a human shield. <laughs> the other thing is, some weird things happened while I was on the stage. Oh? Oh, <laughs> sorry, Bonnie. I didn't mean to leave you out of the conversation. My bad. Is Bonnie your pet cat? No, we just met. We bumped into each other right after I slipped away. And you've already named her? Well, it'd be kind of difficult for us to communicate otherwise. Besides, I think she's taken a liking to the name. Aww. Having you, Bonnie. That's adorable. That's adorable. Yeah, that's right. Good kitty. We'll go find your owner soon, I promise. Owner? Not a stray cat then? I would guess not by the bow tie. Nope. She's wearing a collar, and for the most part, she's pretty well-groomed. If she is a stray, she hasn't been for long. Her stomach's been growling a lot. I guess she must have been missing for a few days now. As much as I'd love to hang out with her for a while longer, her owner's probably worried sick about her. Assuming she has an owner, that is. <sighs> but the reception... I should probably show my face there again at some point. Even if it's just to make excuses and leave again. Mm, decision time. This is a tough decision for you? Well, I just find it exhausting. Thinking through all the different ramifications of different choices and so on. That's more Lenny's area than mine. So, unless it's something really important, I usually just leave the decision making to him. Hmm, but for once he's not here when you need him. Bet that doesn't happen often. It's fine. He got Fermine to make me a little something for just this situation. Poof! A fatometer. Fatometer? What's this? It looks pretty over the top, I know. But it's essentially just a box of cards. He kept the design simple, so it'd be harder to break. The way it works is, I pick a card at random, then look at the number on the card. And how does that help you make a decision? Well, for example, if the number on the card is five or higher, I help Bonnie find her owner. If it's less than five, I go back to the reception. Simple and straightforward. I just have to believe in the bond between me and my cards, and my fate will reveal itself to me in numerical form. At least, that's what Linny said. Anyway... I guess I'll give you a demonstration. Keeps to draw a card, device it's a foreign huh. describing. I didn't so. like that. Was I using it wrong? Hmm. Maybe if I just Smacks smacks it and all the cards fall on the ground. <laughs> Hit it! That Literally fixes everything. Design flaws to iron out. I'll have to let Fremenet know. I feel like this maybe wasn't a design issue. Let's see. Which card did I get? Four. Less than five, so that means no helping Bonnie. Aww. Well, the cards fell on the ground, though, so I don't think it counts as fate. If you want to get the right answer, you have to let fate decide. Also something Linny said. So, to put it another way, if picking a card up off the ground is how to not leave it to fate, then that means it must be the wrong answer. I think what Linny really meant is sometimes you have to accept the answer you don't want. <laughs> um, or, why don't you pick a card? Since I ran into you here, that means uh, our fates are, like, interfering with each other. I feel like she's reaching, but it's all right. <laughs> I'll pick another card for you. Thank you. This one is final, I promise. Here, take the fatometer. If it's five or above, that means fate successfully changed. Anything lower than five is a fail. Also, if you have your own thoughts about what I should do, feel free to share it. Now that I've got a good problem solver here to help, oh, I don't need to run every little thing by fate. Um, think we should help Bonnie. I want to help the kitty. I want to help the kitty. So we're looking for Bonnie's owner. 
How do you plan to find them? Um, I think I'll go to the Steambird and see about putting an ad in the paper. You want to come along? I think Bonnie wants you to come with. Mm-hmm. Sure, if it means I get to hang out with you for a bit longer. Fatometer. Ooh, I get to keep it. It's an item. Ooh. Every stupendous day starts with a steam bird. Oh, hi, Lynette. Hi, traveler. What can I hi. help you with? Uh, any commissions in there about a missing cat? Hmm. I don't think so. Have you picked up a stray? Yep. If there's no commission to follow up on, could we post a notice about the missing cat instead? Why, of course. What a kind thing to do. Just fill out the form. Well, we've registered you as missing. You can stay at my place until your owner finds you. <laughs> so cute. Also, I just wanted to say thanks for keeping us company for so long. Well, I should probably head back to the drinks reception. Hopefully most of the people have left by now. If you've got some time, you should stop by my place tomorrow to see Bonnie. There's a nice cup of tea in it for you. Looking forward to it. All right. See you then. Mm-hmm. I believe this cat belongs to me. I already told you, this isn't your cat. <laughs> Just take a breather, you two. Uh-oh. What's going on? Oh, you're here. As you can probably see, you'll have to take a rain check on that tea I promised you. At least for now. This is my friend's cat. He's preoccupied with some important business, so I came to retrieve her in his stead. Hmm. Passive checks are special type of checks that need to be actively triggered, but it's automatically trigger at specific times. If you pass you Okay, somebody on the Hoyo development team has been playing too much D D. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. I'm playing D and D in Genshin now. What the heck? Seems a bit unnatural. The way she speaks is loud and authoritative. Like she's deliberately using her tone of voice to dispel any doubts about her integrity. No, no. It's far more likely this cat to escape from the Humane Society. How about we let Bonnie decide? Uh, Bonnie? Uh, that's the name I've given her in the meantime. Animal. Yeah, somebody has been, somebody on the development team has been playing too much D and D. What the heck? Animal. Anyway, let's see who does, Bonnie decides to approach. Random checks to remove the phaetometer. Awesome. So the phaetometer potentially it it it, it 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 essentially turns Genshin into D and D. What the heck? I love this. I'm like surprised, but I love this. Draw time, you get a number between 1 and 20. The number of displays is greater than check difficulty. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the cards are basically our dice. Random checks also serve as an indicator for Destiny's course. Current check bonuses. Yeah, this is essentially just D&D. &D. This is essentially just D&D &D and Genshin! Oh, that's a two. Oh, oh, oh no. That's not good. Essentially rushes to hide behind lip, poking your head out ever well, so slightly. this complicates things. Uh, there's no way to tell who her owner is. I told you before. This is my friend's cat. It's normal for her not to trust me. Listen, I'm the director of the Humane Society, okay? We've got so many strays, dogs, cats, you name it. I'm not even the one feeding them most of the time. You can hardly expect the cat to recognize me. Then how are you so sure he, she belongs to you? She just looked somewhat familiar, so I came to check, just in case. 
If she turns out to be one of ours, I'll take her back. Simple as that. Even if that's not the case, the Humane Society could still take her in. If no one else comes to claim her, that is. What's the Humane Society? Ah, we're an organization that specializes in rescuing and sheltering stray animals. We've been in business for several decades now. I'm Bernard, the current director. The Humane Society? Huh. The name sounds familiar. I remember hearing good things. Near the one in the Cartier Lyonnais? Yes, yes, that's the one. Anyway, um, if it's not too much trouble, could I possibly take a closer look at the cat? If it turns out I really am mistaken, I suppose that means the cat belongs to this lady here. She would be the only remaining option, after all. It belongs to my friend. If that's here to keep watch, it should be fine. Go on, Bonnie. Hmm. Oh, nope. Looks like I was mistaken. They do look similar, but there's an ever so slight difference in this one's fur color. Deepest apologies, friends. Well, I suppose this means I still have a missing cat to search for. Apologies again for the confusion. Hmm. So this is your friend's cat? Mm. Oh, uh, yes, exactly. Wait a second. You lied earlier, didn't you? Yes! Lied? She's sus! I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. She's sus! A liar always has a tell. The look in their eyes, their breathing pattern, the way they hold themselves. The things that can give you away are often more numerous than you would think. What are you talking about? The way I see it, you're conflating baseless conjecture with fact. And you're sus! Normally, so... when someone is called out, their breathing speeds up as they begin to panic. But your breathing pattern hasn't changed one bit. In fact, it's been strangely calm and measured this entire time. It stands to reason, then, that your agitated behavior earlier was all an act. If you're a bad guy, I'm sure you'll take off running the first chance you get. If you're a good guy, the most likely explanation is that you're a member of the Guards, or some similar organization. And you're basing this off of... She's good Intuition. at observing people. Nothing more. <laughs> Intuition. Well, I have to hand it to you, Lynette. You're right. <laughs> I'm a member of the Guards. The name's Elodie. I'm currently investigating cross-border smuggling case. This cat here... Bonnie was her name? Well, her owner is one of the prime suspects of our investigation. Hmm. Huh. A couple of days ago... Our suspect got wind that we were on his tail and fled. That's most likely how he got separated from the cat. I just so happened to stumble upon your notice in the Steambird. So, I decided to see if he'd come back for her. But, it looks like I overestimated him. Hmm, I don't think I'd come back either if I was on the run. The impact of this case has been huge. The Marichose Phantom, the guards, and the Special Patrol have all launched investigations. If there was even the slightest chance that he would show himself, I had to follow up on the lead. So what's being smuggled? A new kind of illegal drug. Imitation synth. We confiscated all the synth on the market, but addiction isn't something that goes away overnight. Even without substances on the market, people are still looking for a way to get their next fix. And criminals are all too eager to capitalize on that addiction. That was the impetus for imitation synth. Needless to say, a small-scale market opened up very quickly. Mm. After the original synth debacle, we put several measures into place to prevent similar incidents from occurring. The perpetrators got smart, though, and shifted their sales overseas before those measures could kick in. That's when the imitation synth smuggling began. We only recently got word of the presence of imitation synth overseas. We managed to track down evidence of some early transactions, what we were able to find out, however, hasn't proven that useful given the amount of time that has passed. The Marichose Phantom launched an investigation to track down every person in Fontaine capable of producing a drug like that. That's how we learned about Bonnie's owner. Who is he, exactly? He's a researcher at the Fontaine Research Institute. His name is Pierre. Pierre Lafayette, to be exact. Lafayette. Me? 
Oh, Lynette. What slight look of dread crossed Lynette's face. Strange, usually schools are expressed in with such mechanical precision. The Marchose Phantom found him in Poisson. In addition to the cat, he also had a pendant with him. Hmm. At first, there wasn't much cause for suspicion. A search of his house didn't reveal much to go off of either. The Marchose Phantom very nearly left it at that. It was only later that we realized the coat of arms on his pendant belonged to none other than the Lafayette family, one of the most infamous aristocratic families in Fontaine. Obviously, this discovery prompted a further investigation into Pierre. At that point, however, we discovered that he'd already fled. Now the guards and the special patrol are all searching for him. Could his family be hiding him? That's not possible, actually. The Lafayette family has been gone for a long time exactly many years ago several important members of the family including the patriarch were murdered by an assassin of unknown origin from that point on family's power and influence took quite the hit the family is engaged in all manner of crimes as you can imagine there's no shortage of people waiting in the wings to take their revenge and with the family severely weakened they were able to do just that most of the remaining family members succumbed to sickness or hunger. The ones that survived are currently living out their days under a new identity. Pierre is one of those very survivors. He's been hiding away in the Fontaine Research Institute all these years. His true identity unbeknownst to all. Until now, that is. Is it really okay to share all this information with us? Well, my fellow guards have told me all about how smart and courageous you both are. And I know you possess a strong sense of justice. There could be a chance that Pierre, or one of his accomplices, might attempt to get close to Bonnie. Now that you've been briefed on the situation, I was hoping you'd help us keep a lookout. If I take Bonnie back to the guards with me, there's no way Pierre will try and come for her. Not even the most daring of criminals would attempt something like that. Hmm, yeah. To keep Bonnie with us for the time being? Seems like I it. I have to admit, I'm not holding out too much hope that Pierre will come back for her. But if there's even the slightest chance, then it's worth a shot. Well, I've got some other leads to follow up on. If Pierre does appear, please contact me right away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what's wrong, Lynette? It's nothing. I'm fine. It's just... The head of the Lefebvre family. He was the eminent person who kidnapped me all those years ago. Probably good for him that he's dead then, because I would put him in the grave myself. <laughs> it was at a dinner party. Someone tricked me into boarding the Lefebvre family carriage. Whoever it was, they took me back to their home. But... Before anything worse could happen, Father intervened. So then the assassin he, she mentioned... Yep. Father was the one who orchestrated the fall of the Lefevere family. That's what led Lenny and I to join the House of the Hearth. After all these years. I never thought I'd hear the Lefevere name again. Are you okay? Don't worry about me. I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. I was just thinking about Linny. Mm. He's been acting strange recently. He avoids me for days on end, consumes himself with some secret investigation, and then out of the blue pushes me to do that acting job. Sounds like he's trying to keep you distracted or keep away from you until he finishes whatever he's doing. Thinking about it, now it's almost like the one i drew from that deck of cards was part of his plan all along he must have asked fermine to help him out in any case i know he's hiding something from me he's really pulled out all the stops this time think he knows about pierre it's very possible i'm sure he tried to send me away because he was afraid it would bring up some painful memories for me it wasn't necessary though 
Even after all these years, he's still as overprotective as ever. He's your big You'll brother. You'll have to help me teach him a lesson <laughs> if we run into him along the way. <laughs> he's your brother, I suppose. That's that's how big brothers are. But okay, along the way, are we going somewhere? Yep. I want to head to the Fontaine Research Institute to learn more information about Pierre. Just let me activate search mode, and then we'll head out. Who knows? Maybe we'll run into Linny along the way. Are you trying to help out Linny with his investigation? A little bit of both, perhaps. For the most part, though, I just have the sense that something's not right. Something isn't adding up about Pierre's story. I'm just not sure what. Hmm. Sometimes you just gotta take the bull by the horns, right? Okay. I'll write a letter explaining everything to the crew. Once that's done, we can head out. Mm-hmm. Ah! Speak of the devil and he shall appear! Lynette, you're, uh, not at rehearsal? No. Nope. drop the act, brother. In fact, I don't think either of us will have a need for acting anytime soon. You should know better than to try and keep something from me. You've never been able to do that, even when we were kids. <sighs> and that's why I tried to distract you with the masked mime show. But I guess you're just too good. Care to introduce us to your new assistant? <clears throat> this is Officer Shelbras, captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. You may have met her already. We meet again, Chevros. Nice to see you. Mm-hmm. And you. I should clarify something. Mr. Linney's here at my invitation, not the other way around. To borrow your expression, Miss Lynette, I suppose that would make him my assistant more than anything. We've brought on Mr. Linney as a consultant in the past. He was instrumental in helping us crack a case involving a perpetrator who used magic tricks to commit crimes. I was hoping he'd be able to provide some valuable insight this time around as well. Are you here because of the Le Favre case? Ah, uh, so you've heard everything then? Mm -hmm. That's exactly why we're here. There's always been questions surrounding the fall of the Le Favre family. Some people even believe the House of the Hearth was involved. Whoever was behind it all was extremely cautious. They didn't leave a shred of evidence. This very fact, however? Leads me to believe it was indeed the work of that harbinger. I took a look at the entrance and exit records of all the carriages that night. Let's just say it wasn't hard to deduce that there's ill will between you two. Don't worry, I don't have any evidence to that effect, and I certainly don't plan on going to bat for such a despicable family. Plus, mm. you were victims back then more than anything. I sought Smart Mr. Lady's help with the smuggling case. Nothing more. Smart lady, I, 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 I've always liked you, Chevros, and this is why. She's got a good head on her shoulders. You're really teaming up with the House of the Hearth? The way I look at it, it's a collaboration between us as people, not the organizations we represent. Mm. Besides, by working together, we can expose the truth as quickly as possible. You can hardly say that's at odds with the justice my organization strives for. I'm assuming you wouldn't be opposed to some extra help? Not at all. I was planning to invite you from the very beginning, Miss Lynette. It's just that my assistant here raised some objections. Uh... <laughs> Lenny, I'm not the same person I was back then. That little girl who did nothing but cower in the corner in fear, she doesn't need saving anymore. I know you want to protect your little sisters, but little sisters don't stay little forever. <sighs> I'm sorry, Lynette. You're right. I let my concerns get the better of me. Oh, and the next time you want to distract me, you should try a different approach. <laughs> Who's this? You pick up a stray while I was gone? Uh, it's a bit complicated. I'll explain later. Anyway, her name's Bonnie. Well, if there are no objections, then I suppose the only thing left to say is... Lynette? Traveler? Welcome to the team. Share what they've learned with you over the it past few It appears the Lafayver family was very particular in their use of insignias and emblems. The family would use different emblems to mark differences in status, blood relation, and the like. 
In fact, the insignia that was discovered on the pendant was used to represent an illegitimate child. So, that would mean he's a bastard child? It's highly likely. That very status might have been what allowed him to emerge from the fall of his family relatively unscathed. It would also explain why he was able to assume a new identity as a researcher with relative ease. We discovered something interesting, though. After talking to some of his co-workers, it appears he pretty much works at the Institute in name only. He's practically been cast out. Mm, what happened? Apparently, Pierre was once addicted to synth. He tried to use the resources at the Institute to create a substance with a similar effect. He claimed it was just for research purposes, but the Institute revoked his access to the relevant materials regardless. He was placed on disciplinary leave, pending a thorough investigation of his actions. Hmm. But, it seems the Institute ran into some trouble along the way. Could have been a lack of personnel or a timing issue. In any case, they had to table their formal investigation into Pierre. Unfortunately, that also included reporting any relevant information to the higher authorities. As for his family background, it appears none of his co-workers at the Institute were aware of that information. All they could tell us was that he was quite the recluse. Hmm. Did you find anything useful at his residence? Other than the pendant, we didn't find anything else of note at his residence in Poisson. Based on the samples of imitation synth we've been able to analyze, it appears the substance leaves behind strong traces wherever it's produced or stored. Those traces might not be obvious to the casual observer, but they're not something our guard poodles would miss. Guard poodles? The heir's home, though, came up completely clean. We didn't find any records indicating possible involvement in overseas transactions either. So, the Marachose Phantom didn't view him as a major suspect at first. At first? Mm. Maybe he had a separate, dedicated area where he made the imitation synth. Well, his neighbors did say he was often gone for long stretches of time. You would think with him out and about so much, people would have spotted him around Poisson, but residents said they barely ever saw him in town. If his reclusive nature was just a matter of keeping a low profile, I guess it would make sense for him to have a secret base to carry out his business. After he disappeared, the guards conducted a thorough search of Poisson they didn't come across any suspicious locations. Poisson. What is it, Lynette? You know Hotel de Boer, where I first found Bonnie? To get there from Poisson, you have to cross a stretch of ocean. It's not somewhere a cat could just wander off on its own. A cat? You mean... Mm-hmm. Bonnie is Pierre's cat. Oh, that's right! When the Marachose Phantom first tracked him down, I remember there being something about a cat in their report. So this is her? From what we've learned about Pierre's habits, he doesn't seem like the type to venture out without a purpose. So what you're saying, Lynette, is that Bonnie couldn't have gone missing in Poisson. If that's true, then... She must have wandered off only after Pierre brought her to the secret base. Exactly. Bonnie might even know where it is. Wait. You think the cat can lead us there? But she's not trained like one of our guard poodles. How is she supposed to understand what we want her to do? Hmm. Lynette could give it a try. Meow. Meow, meow. Meow? Seems to understand what you want to do. She flicks her tail and meows loudly. Mm, near the coast? beach and beneath the cliffs the place we're looking for is most likely north of the court of Fontaine. well i've certainly never taken a witness statement like this before <laughs> well if it works out maybe it's something worth getting used to <laughs> cats and humans are actually pretty alike when it comes to communication most of what we want to convey can be accomplished through body language alone but humans tend to rely too much on speech to ever take advantage of that fact. Of course, body language has its limitations. You're not going to be able to get across anything too complicated. The important thing is that we now have a lead. Let's try and find a place that matches the clues Bonnie gave us. Meow. 
Seems like Bonnie is trying to take us somewhere. Follow the kitty! Follow the kitty! Gardamex ahead. Look oh out. boy. There we go. There we go. Oh, up here. Wow, Lynette, you found this place so easily. If I thought there was any chance you'd say yes, I'd recruit you into the special patrol here and now. No questions asked. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. I pretty much receive letters daily from people trying to poach her from me. <laughs> Let's just focus on our search. There's a lot to investigate. Aha! Just as we thought. This is where the imitation synth was being made. These bottles and jars, they're all imitation synth? Looks like he's got more than just imitation synths stashed around here. In addition to the raw materials needed to synthesize the substance itself, there's a large quantity of cleaning agents and a few drugs I haven't been able to identify. These cleaning agents are likely used to dispel traces of the substance, like its smell. The Special Patrol did some digging into imitation synth. Our records indicate that it's very difficult for ordinary people to detect traces left behind by the stuff. I'm sure that was the case for Pierre as well. It must have taken a considerable amount of time and skill to ensure all those traces get washed away. But what are these other drugs for? Hmm. The material these bags are made of, it's quite rare. Does it look similar to the material used for your magic pockets? It's the very same, actually. Romaritime flower fiber. But there's something special about the composition of these bags. I took a closer look, and it appears they're not only waterproof, but also corrosion and leak resistant. Even the strings look specially designed to keep the bags closed nice and tight. I came across some bags made of the same material just now, but they were much smaller and thinner. From the look of them, they seemed far less durable as well. So, kinda like one of those small sealed bags? Very similar, actually. Normally, it would be easy for a guard poodle to sniff out the imitation synth, but if it was sealed away in a bag like that, it might be possible to elude detection for some time. Mm. But what could these big bags be for, then? If the goal is to keep the imitation synth hidden and sealed away, these bags seem a bit too conspicuous. Hmm. When the Mar Chaussee Phantom searched Pierre's house, there was no sign of these barrels, right? Mm, he must have moved them, but carrying them all the way out here would attract way too much attention. Mm. You're right. That doesn't seem like his way of doing things. How did he get them here, then? Hmm. There are still signs of water damage dried up. Water stains can be seen around the circumference of the barrels. Seem to be a pattern to the location of the water stains. For some reason, they'd be limited to the lower half. Let's don't seem very tight, leaving sizable gaps around the edges, but there doesn't appear to be any traces of water Only the lower inside. halves of the barrels appear to have been submerged in water. Based on the various ingredients we've found, this appears to be where Pierre was cooking up his imitation synth. It looks like he used a special cleaning agent to get rid of any residual traces of the substance on his person before he left. That's how he was able to get past the guard poodles. That's why the Mara Chaussee Phantom didn't find anything suspicious in his home. So then he transferred the imitation synth into small sealed bags and took it somewhere else for the drop-off. No. I don't believe our suspect is the kind of person who'd go around carrying incriminating evidence with him. That would potentially create too many eyewitnesses. The cleaning agent and the sealed bags might get past the guard poodles, but if a member of the public or even a guard on patrol happened to see him during the drop-off, a quick search would reveal everything. That's still a very risky operation. What about if the drop-off happened at sea? There'd be no one around to see him. 
The barrels we found were wet around the base, but the top half was dry. As if they'd been standing upright in the water. Hmm. Hmm. If you put a barrel in the water, it will normally float on its side. Unless it's heavily loaded, in which case it'll sink. So we must have used something to tightly seal the big bags full of air. Turning them to airtight flotation devices. Yes. With flotation rings around the body of the barrels, they'd stay upright in the water. And then he could afford to load them more fully. Hmm. You think he used floating barrels? Hmm. I suppose if he acted at night, when there are very few other boats around and visibility is low, it's a valid theory. We can't rule it out. But then, wouldn't the barrels be carried off by the waves or the currents? How would the person doing the pickup know where to look? Hmm, sounds difficult to keep in one place. Like certain pets. Traveler, can you come take a dip in the sea with me? I have a feeling that somewhere down there, we might find some rope. If a rope can be used to keep a pet from running away, then why not a barrel? Hmm. Good thinking, Lynette. Good thinking. The wreckage of a small boat? Ah! Passed my perception right. check. Time to go up and report. As expected, we found a few pieces of rope and some anchoring stones underwater. If you attach them to a floating barrel, it would look like this. Ah! With this anchoring system, it would be possible to use floating barrels for the drop-off. You would just need to drop them in the water at the agreed-upon location. We also came across the wreckage of a small boat. It must have been left out on the water and capsized due to the force of the wind and waves. Its small size, however, would have made it perfect for staying undetected. Let's talk this through. Based on the evidence we've collected, it seems like Pierre would row a small boat out to the agreed upon transfer point, drop off the barrels, leave, and then row back and retrieve them after the transfer was complete. Wouldn't it be easier for both parties to meet up at the transfer point on their respective vessels and exchange the goods right then and there? It could be that he was trying to avoid meeting up with his associate face to face. As one of the sole survivors of the Lafayette family, maybe he was just used to that sort of elusive lifestyle. I guess. It seems like Pierre deliberately chose the floating barrel method so that the goods could be dropped off and picked up at separate times. That way, the two parties wouldn't have to meet each other. Mm. Well, if that's the case, they must not have a very close working relationship. Let's not jump to any conclusions just yet. Assumptions can be detrimental to solving a case. It's possible they were just trying to keep a low profile. Two boats sailing to the same location at once could be too conspicuous. Mm, I guess the most Ross important point. thing is that we can now confirm Pierre wasn't acting alone. The floating barrel drop-off system is proof enough of that. Let's say for now that he was only in charge of producing the imitation synth. That would mean there has to be at least one other person involved in the operation. Likely in charge of transporting the goods across the border. That explains why we couldn't find evidence linking him to the any, to any overseas operation. Since we've determined that the goods were transported by boat, maybe we can track down some travel logs or something. We can certainly check the various ports for that information. It's possible, however, that Pierre's associate also used a small boat for the transport, and docked along the shore rather than at a large port. If that's the case, it's unlikely there would be any record left behind. Have you looked into the ports already, Chef Ross? Absolutely. Before Pierre disappeared, we made sure to investigate all sorts of outward-bound vessels. We also had port authorities keep a lookout for anything suspicious. Unfortunately, we were never able to find out how they managed to get the imitation synth across the border. Small boat and a few barrels isn't going to get you very far. You're right. Whatever vessel was used for the pickup, the person responsible for smuggling the substance out of Fontaine would have had to use a larger vessel for the actual transport. That's the only way they would be able to smuggle on a large enough scale to make a profit. 
They must have found a way to disguise the imitation synth to clear port inspections. Hmm. Well, even if we can't find any travel logs, we can still search for other clues. Exactly. We can't let any opportunities slip through the cracks. Although, given the amount of ports that could be involved, we should probably split up. I'll run home and ask some of my brothers and sisters to try and dig up some information. Mm. I should also head back and update my platoon on our progress. I'll grab some reinforcements while I'm at it. Lynette, Traveler, why don't you head to Lumidus Harbor and see what you can find out? Yes, right. ma'am! Come on, Bonnie. You too. Oh, Lynette, Traveler. And hey. Bonnie too. What brings you all here? Elodie! Hmm? Did something happen? I'm back to check. Uh, blah, 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 blah. we're here to check the travel logs. Oh, I see. Thank you for everything you're doing for the people of Fontaine. I don't mention it. What are you doing here? I'm in charge of guarding the port. You mentioned you were after some travel logs, right? I can go fetch those for you. Thank you. Looks like I've got another hard day of work ahead of me. <sighs> Sorry about that. Are things usually pretty hectic around here? No, not usually. It's this incident that happened recently. Before that, everything was normal. All we had to do was confiscate anything suspicious and we could call it a day. Pretty simple stuff. Mm. But things are much more complicated now. We somehow let suspicious cargo pass through the port undetected. Not even our guard poodles were able to sniff it out. Even worse, we still don't know how the perpetrator was able to conceal the goods so well. By suspicious cargo, do you mean imitation synth? Yep. However, prohibited substances are just one example. We confiscate all sorts of contraband during the course of our inspections. Or at least, we're supposed to. So what happens to the goods you confiscate? Oh, we keep them in a storage locker. If they turn out to be something particularly dubious, we'll turn them over to the Maison Orderly. If the goods are only slightly suspicious but could otherwise be harmless, like raw materials that could potentially be used to create contraband, we return them to the ship they were confiscated from instead of letting them pass through the port. Sorry for the wait. These are the travel logs for all the recent activity at the port. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Poodle. Oh, you brought Gerard with you. Uh, actually, he followed me here himself. It's like he smells something on me. <coughs> huh. I wonder why Gerard is reacting to you two so strongly. Uh, could be because we just left the place where the invitation synth was made. Huh? We were so careful not to touch it, but we still ended up with traces on us. If it leaves a residue so easily, I just don't understand how the culprit was able to disguise the goods at all. Why don't you have a look at the travel logs first? All ships coming in and out of the port are recorded here, except for the ones the port authorities ride to and from work. Flip to the numerous ones and travel logs and man's. Now, several instances where the Humane Society is listed, the name really seems to stand out. I knew there was something suspicious about that Humane Society guy. I knew there was something suspicious about him. The Humane Society. Countered that organization before, right? Their name is all over the exit logs. The purpose for leaving is always listed as overseas adoption. Ah, the director of the organization explained that, actually. He said a lot of the cat and dog breeds unique to Fontaine are also very popular overseas. So, his organization offers an overseas adoption program. Bernard, the director of the Humane Society, was the man who came looking for Bonnie earlier. Cat that fled from Pierre looked just like the cat the Humane Society is looking for. Really be a coincidence? I don't think so. Seems as, as if Bernard was hiding something. He also seemed so insistent, but only ran a cursory check before just leaving like that. 
When I came looking for Bonnie earlier, what if he actually wasn't there to check if Bonnie was his missing cat? Maybe there was some other purpose. Have you figured it out too, Traveler? The way the criminal disguised the goods? I think I have an idea. When Bernard asked to take a closer look at Bonnie, he was actually checking whether there was any imitation synth in her stomach. She's using animals at the shelter to smuggle imitation synth? That's messed up! That's messed up! No, wait, what? The sealed bags we found at the secret base. They were specially made to be corrosion resistant. So that they wouldn't be digested. And there were gaps around the lids of the barrels, and airbags were used to keep them upright in the water. So the animals would be able to breathe. Those drug shepherds found at the secret base. She most likely didn't recognize them because they're not used on human beings. It's an anesthetic used on pets. The perpetrator must have given it to the animals. So they would keep still in the floating barrels. Pure. Must have made the animals swallow the sealed bags full of imitation synth at his secret base. Then he stuffed them into floating barrels and left the rest to Bernard. The sealed bags combined with an animal's body odor would certainly be enough to mask the scent of imitation synth. During our inspections, we would have never thought to inspect the bellies of those animals for anything suspicious. Even if we tried to feel around for something, I'm sure it would be difficult to detect. Exactly. I bet Bernard even transported animals with synth in their stomach alongside ones without. That way, it would be even harder to say with certainty that something was amiss. You think Bonnie could have imitation synth in her stomach? Mm. She's probably in the clear. Otherwise, Bernard would have never left without her. I'm guessing he didn't know whether Pierre had already hidden the next batch of imitation synth before he fled. Just imagine. He sees the notice we put in the Steambird, and it turns out that one of the very cats he gave to Pierre for the smuggling operation is out in the open, roaming the streets of Fontaine. If Pierre had already hidden the next batch of imitation synth, then Bonnie would practically be living proof of their crimes. He would have had no choice but to go after her. So, that's why he came to find you and insisted on taking a closer look at the cat. Hmm. That fact is probably what spared Bonnie. Uh, wait a second, I'm a little lost here. I get the part about hiding the substance in the pets, but those... Uh, what did you call them again? Floating barrels? Why even put the animals in there in the first place? If you've got something as convenient as a floating barrel, why not just stuff it with the imitation synth directly? Why not wait to hide the stuff until after the exchange has been made? In order to make sure the animals could swallow the sealed bags, they made them extremely thin. Had they not done that, the animals would have likely bitten or chewed through them. And if any of the imitations synth leaked out, they would also have needed a lot of cleaning agents to get rid of the resulting smell. That step would have required a lot of energy, as well as a certain amount of technical expertise. So, it was better left to the more experienced Pierre. We've already proven how easy it is to pick up trace amounts of imitation synth, so I'm sure Bernard was taking all the precautions he could to avoid the same fate. Okay, then let's head to the Humane Society right away and bring that guy to justice. I'll mm. bring a Gardamek to speed up the process. Justice! The headquarters of the Humane Society should be somewhere around here. Bernard could show up any moment now. Oh, here are the people from earlier. Wait, you're from the guards? Mm-hmm. You screwed up, man. You screwed up. Cotton 4K. Okay. We can't let him get away. Cotton 4K, get back here. <sighs> Give it up, Bernard. <sighs> mercy. Have mercy. I'll talk. I'll tell you everything I know. Wow. The Humane Society has done so much good over the years. And yet you have committed such an atrocious deed in its name. Look, I didn't have a choice, okay? My father cared about those blasted animals so much, he didn't bother to take care of his human wife and son at all. While those animals were showered with love, I lived worse than a dog. 
No one asked. Tell me, how did you first get to know Pierre? Well, after I took over the Humane Society, it gradually became harder and harder to maintain its operations. Until one day, someone suddenly passed me a letter. It said that I could stand to get a large sum of money as long as I helped them to transport some animals abroad. It was only after a few such transports that I finally understood what I was really transporting. But then, Pierre wrote to me, saying that we were already partners in crime and that I better keep cooperating with him if I didn't want to be reported to the guards. Kind of dishonesty. Yeah, he's lying. You knew it from the very beginning, didn't you? The reason why you had to go through so many steps just to transport some animals. I'd suggest that you confess everything right now if you don't want to add anything else to your list of crimes. <laughs> yes, officer. Better. I would order wooden barrels and flotation devices according to his instructions, and then load the sleeping animals onto a boat. Once I sailed to the location he provided, I would dump everything together into the sea. And a few days after that, I'd come by again in my boat and pick up the animals sleeping in the barrels. Once I had received enough of them, I'd bring them to the harbor to be adopted abroad. That guy, Pierre, he was running the entire show. He set up all the meeting times and found all the foreign adopters. Oh, oh and he even supplied all of the goods, too. I just did the transport. He was the one who planned out and executed everything else. So where is he now? Look, I don't know, okay? I've never ever met him in person. We've only ever communicated through letters. And when did he send his final letter to you? J just last night. He said that the Marshalsea Phantom is now after him, so he's planning to go into hiding for some time. He didn't mention where he's thinking about going, though. B but he did tell me to look out for the guards. It's been a few days since Pierre's last appearance. I'd wager that he sent that letter after he found his hiding spot. So where's that letter now? I, I burned them. It was on his orders. I had to burn every letter after reading them. I, I wasn't even allowed to share them with the rest of the society employees. Sure sounds like you're trying to use the lack of witnesses or evidence to pin the blame on Pierre. N no, I swear, this time I'm only telling you the truth. Well... We can check the truth of your statements at the Opera House. I hope you know what'll be coming for you if I were to find any discrepancy between the evidence and the testimony you just gave. I know, I know, I swear I was just telling the truth. Mm, for your sake, I hope so. <sighs> My thanks to you both. Had it not been for you, I really don't know what would have happened to this case. Bonnie helped, too. <laughs> That's true. It was all thanks to her that Bernard was finally exposed. Meow. Meow. I to hide. Oh, why is she hiding? <laughs> and it looks like she's grown quite fond of you two as well. <sighs> then I'll leave you be. Just let me know if you find any other new leads. Uh huh. <sighs> Bernard. What's wrong? Hmm. Something on your mind still? Huh. It was that obvious, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, even though it didn't feel like Bernard was lying, after talking to him, I'm getting an even stronger sense that something's not quite right. We investigated so quickly that perhaps we've missed a thing or two along the way. Let me activate deduction mode and consider things again from the top to see if we can find anything new. Okay. Is there still anything unresolved or strange that we should try to consider? Hmm. Bernard's letters. Bernard claims to have received a letter last night from Pierre. In the letter, Pierre stated that he had gone into hiding. Is there something wrong with the letter? Hmm. Delivery method. Regardless of whether he sent it anonymously or secretly delivered it himself, it's no longer something we can follow up on. Letter didn't mention Pierre's hiding spot, although it makes sense that Pierre wouldn't want anyone to find him. Bonnie had already been on the loose for a few days when we found her yesterday morning. I mean, she had already broken free when the letter was written. I 
the point of the letter was to tell Bernard to get on his guard, then why didn't it also warn him about Bonnie? If Bonnie had imitation synth in her body, then she was a liability that had to be recovered at all costs. But if she wasn't carrying anything, then it would have made sense to tell Bernard not to worry. And thinking about it, Bernard only attracted our attention in the first place because he came to look for Bonnie. Could it be that the person who wrote the letter also knew nothing about Bonnie's whereabouts? Or they had a separate goal entirely? Hmm. That what we find in Poisson. The Marachaussee Phantom found Bonnie and the Lefebvre pendant at Pierre's residence. That was the beginning point of our investigation. Hmm. Bonnie has been with Pierre ever since the first meeting between Pierre and the Marachaussee Phantom. That's why Elodie came looking for her, but that shouldn't be all. Pattern on the pendant is proof that its owner is an illegitimate child of the Lafaver family, but this shouldn't be all. According to Bernard, the trafficked animals were taken directly to Pear's base rather than Poisson. The Lafaver family is infamous in Fontaine, and even their innocent scions became targets of revenge. But Pierre just carried the pendant with him as if it was just an ordinary piece of jewelry. Pierre became the key suspect in the case because of a suspicious cat and a suspicious pendant. Why would he leave such an obvious trail for us to follow when he took so much care to not leave any traces of imitation synth in his home? Has an unexplained part in the operations of this trafficking ring. Well, we've discovered that Bernard is responsible for the trafficking, while Pierre deals with supplying the goods. Is there something else in this scheme that we're missing? Any past member of the Lefebvre family would probably have a number of connections outside of Fontaine. They always communicated in writing, yet all those letters have been burned so we can no longer confirm or trace anything. Already proven that Bernard and Pierre coordinated their handoffs by passing floating barrels to each other on an open stretch of water. Bernard can be compensated for his work after completing a shipment. No suspicious record would be left as long as he receives the funds as an individual rather than through the Humane Society. Ooh. Ooh. Excuse me. According to Chevros' investigations, Pierre has been formally recommended for a synth-related research and can no longer get any materials from the Fontaine Research Institute. Yeah, according to Bernard, Pierre also supplied all of the goods. But if the Marchaussee Phantom's records are correct, Pierre should have lost all access to the materials required to create the imitation synth. And the Institute has also not reported any theft of their stocks. The final question is, why did I sense that something wasn't right after hearing Bernard's testimony? Even more so than before. Both written letters and handoffs using floating barrels are methods of communication that can be intercepted. Pierre made such a complicated operations plan, yet also exposed himself so easily to the investigating guards. Bernard has never met Pierre in person. It almost feels like the plan and the expose were done by two separate individuals and Pierre was set up. Even Bernard himself never knew that it wasn't Pierre that had been pulling his strings all along. It was someone else. Deductive mode deactivated. <sighs> I think we may be close to the actual answer. Now behave, and follow me to the interrogation room. Ow, that hurt. Ow! Really about to leave. Is it okay to let them go?
Okay, because I talked with Lynette and went through all that, I have bonuses. 13. That's not a bad roll. 33. <laughs> I had to get a 20. <laughs> no, we can't let her get away. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Is there something else you need from me, Traveler? Bernard and Pierre, they weren't really acting alone, were they? Huh? I see. It all makes sense now. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> Look, even our confessed criminal here has no idea what you're saying. Because he has been kept in the dark all along. And I assume it's the same with Pierre. Bernard thought he was communicating with Pierre, and Pierre thought he was taking orders from Bernard. But for all this time, neither of them knew there was a third person all along. <sighs> that never quite added up for me. Why did Pierre feel compelled to return to his home with Bonnie and the Pendant and make them so easy to find for the Marachose Phantom? Any animals Pierre received from the floating barrel should have been taken directly to his base. And considering his precarious situation, the Pendant should have been the last thing Pierre would leave lying around. Both of these things are in stark contrast to his usual meticulous and vigilant behavior. There's only one reasonable explanation. He was following orders, just like Bernard. He probably received the following instructions right before the Phantom came knocking on his door. Bring the cat and the pendant, and our undercover agent will be sure to help you. Unbeknownst to him, however, the third person who wrote that letter to him had long decided to sacrifice him and Bernard to save themselves. Honestly, the third person probably sent, probably planned to sell both of them out from the very beginning. What? You can't be serious. There was a third person involved? If you focus only on Bernard's testimony, it's easy to believe that only Bernard and Pierre were working together. The case appeared extremely simple. Bernard did the trafficking, Pierre the imitation synth production, drugging, and stuffing. With everything accounted for, the third person would then be cleared of all suspicion. What? Wait, but that doesn't make any sense. If that's the actual truth, then as soon as Pierre is caught, you explain his side of the story and the third person will... Yep, which is why the third person made sure that Pierre would never be found again. Once they had instructed Pierre to expose himself, the third person wrote to Pierre again, suggesting that everything had been taken care of and he should take Bonnie and safely return to his base. Then they ambushed Pierre and made him disappear. Of course, Pierre's disappearance at such a sensitive time immediately made him a prime suspect. Knowing that Bonnie had last been seen with him, all the third person would have to do from that point on would be to leave the Phantom to investigate the Humane Society and get Bernard to confess the truth. And Pierre would have, would have been seen as gone into hiding in anticipation of getting caught. Wait, so you're saying that the letter I received yesterday, the one that made me think Pierre was still alive, it was also sent by the third person? Seems like it. Is that what happened? Hmm. I'll get back to headquarters right away and reinvestigate this case from the top. Mm, hold on. Chevra said that assumptions can be detrimental to solving a case. Someone among us, however, has been feeding us all kinds of preconceived notions ever since our first meeting. They suggested that Pierre's disappearance was an attempt to escape the judgment of the law, and that Pierre was a scion of the Lefebvre family. But if the disappearance is truly just a cover-up for a murder, then couldn't the true scion have been an illegitimate daughter, rather than an illegitimate son? Oh, Miss Elodie Lefebvre? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like I got the I hit, hit, hit the nail on the head. A bit too far. You're right. I did let a lot of assumptions get to my head when I first started to talk to you about the case. I'll make sure to correct my behavior. You deliberately fed us lies, but even you could not control every last detail of your plan. There was a flaw in your scheme, and something didn't quite go as planned. Getting the Marchose Phantom to notice Pierre was only the first part of your plan. Had they failed to take notice of the Humane Society, they could have cast a wider net. 
and you couldn't predict what they might possibly find if given enough time. This, of course, was the main weakness of your plan. And once the Special Patrol and Lenny got involved, it became even harder to control the outcome of the investigation. As someone accustomed to acting from behind the scenes, you didn't want to take the risk of personally proposing a raid on the Humane Society. So, you thought about pulling a few more strings, so all the suspicion would point towards Bernard and his society. Great option, of course, would be also to, to dispose of Bonnie and leave her body at Pierre's base in anticipation of a later discovery. Oh, that's morbid. Once the Phantom expanded their search, it would only be a matter of time before they found Pierre's base. If a cat last seen with a suspect turned up dead at the imitation synth base, it wouldn't be long until the Phantom would figure out exactly how she had been mistreated and turn their eyes towards the one organization that has been sending boatloads of animals out of Fontaine. Uh, however, something unexpected happened at the base. Bonnie managed to escape in the chaos. It was probably during your ambush of Pierre. You didn't even have the time to check if she had already been stuffed full of imitation synth. Still, you soon found another opportunity. Before long, Bonnie had made her way back into the city, and even popped up on the Steambird. Like Bernard, you desperately wanted to confirm the contents of her stomach, so you hurried to find us. Unlike Bernard, however, you were hoping that Pierre did have the time to make her swallow a load of imitation synth. While investigating the suspect's cat, we unexpectedly discovered that the suspect has been smuggling imitation synth using living animals as intermediaries. That was your plan, in any case. With that, you'd have been able to lead the investigation towards the Humane Society. Bonnie was very lucky, and you were extremely unlucky. Bonnie had managed to escape before Pierre was able to stuff her full of imitation synth. That part of your plan could no longer be carried out. But as shrewd as you were, you came up with another plan right away. You manipulated the Traveler and I to help you identify Bernard as a key suspect. You knew Eleni was investigating the case of Chevros, and you also knew of Lynette's previous encounter with the Lefebvre family. You used the Lefebvre name as bait to get us to join your investigation. With two extra bodies around, the Special Patrol is sure to soon take note of the strange event of Bernard somehow having a reason to look for Pierre's cat. <laughs> so, what you're saying is, I went to all that trouble just for the chance that you might put forth the suggestion that would lead you down the wrong path. Of course, you did far more than that. Just now, at Lumidus Harbor, were you not the person who highlighted the suspicious activities of the society? By showing us the port's travel logs. Ugh. You even highlighted the society's activities during your compilation of the logs, so they'd be immediately visible to anyone examining the records. Moreover, the logs contained no records of the port authority's activities. In other words, your activities. And what are you trying to suggest with that? I am insinuating that you had plenty of opportunities to transfer the raw materials for imitation synth from the harbor to a boat, and then sail over to the meeting place full of floating barrels. Once Bernard placed the animals in the barrels, you'd open the lids and also dump in the raw materials. As long as you did it before Pierre came for his pickup, there'd be no one the wiser. And that's how neither the trafficker nor the manufacturer knew there was a third person who supplied the raw materials and surreptitiously operated between them. Uh, first you got in touch with both parties and secured the raw materials. Then you instructed Bernard to prepare the floating barrels and the animals. After that, you slipped the raw materials into the barrels next to the animals and requested Pierre pick up the barrels and bring them back to his base. Pierre manufactured imitation synth using the raw materials you provided, stuffed the animals, and placed the animals back into the barrels. Having received the green light from you as Pierre, Bernard then retrieved his animals and shipped them out of Fontaine once he had received enough for a full batch. This is the truth behind your smuggling ring. I can't believe it. I never put two and two together. You were a pawn, <laughs> sir. <laughs> You've sure got an extremely lively imagination. So what do you think she's going to say next? Um, 
ever thought about writing a career in crime novels. Do you have any evidence? But do you have any evidence? Hmm. 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 It appears that it's quite easy to predict what you'll think or say. Then if we apply that to this case, we can also think of a few places to look for incriminating evidence. You know very well that this case will not end until Pierre is found. So you will have him commit suicide out of fear and shame to end the investigation for good. That way, you can also pin the blame for the overseas smuggling activities, the theft of the harbor's confiscated raw materials, and even the Lefevere name on him. After all, dead men tell no tales. But you still wanted to appear as if he had sent that last letter to Bernard, so you have to make sure he cannot be found until after Bernard has confessed to the authorities. To do that, you either will hide his body until you found an appropriate time to set up a fake suicide scene, or you'll dump it someplace where it'll be hard to determine the exact time of death. Submerged in water, for instance. The location would ideally allow you to keep the body hidden for some time while also letting you keep an eye on it. Hmm. Also keep him in a cool environment to be handled later. There are only so many options to hide a person's time of death, after all. As long as the Phantom investigates each of the possibilities in turn, they'll surely find Pierre's remains. Especially since, as the prime suspect who will now be taken into custody, you will no longer have the time to move him, or set up a fake suicide scene to cover up the murder. How absurd. And on what grounds will you order my arrest? Don't think for a second that your spouse of nonsense will amount to any kind of real argument. After all, I'm... Elodie Lefebvre! As the oh. captain of the Special Security oh. and Surveillance Patrol, I hereby oh. declare you as a suspect in the There's case. There's Shamroth! If you have any objections, you may raise them later during interrogation. Shamroth! Linny! That's right. We received a message from Lumidus Harbor that you were going to investigate the Humane Society. We didn't expect to run into you at such a critical moment. While at the harbor, we noticed something else extremely interesting. Apparently, you often used all kinds of excuses to swap your shifts. And if one were to match the times of your shifts to the activities of the Humane Society and those of certain foreign ships, they'd find them to be an exact match. Ha <laughs> ha! That's just a coincidence. Coincidence, yes, my butt. I'm sure you have already thought of a dozen different ways to explain away the suspicious activities. But as far as evidence goes, that should be enough to warrant taking you into custody. Don't worry. If it turns out that the guards are still unable to find any evidence after all this, Lynette and I will do everything in our power to clear your name. <laughs> Although, judging by her reaction, I assume no follow-up from us will be needed. <laughs> the Lefevers were infamous for using disguise and infiltration to achieve their goals. Who would have thought that they would have planted someone within the guards? Judging from the timeline, they likely arranged for you to enter the guards before the fall of the clan. But they probably didn't expect you to turn it to your advantage, and use your job to save yourself during the purge. Not only that, but you actively participated in the interrogation, arrest, and judgment of the Lefevers during their fall, thus clearing yourself of suspicion. You brutally and cruelly abandoned your allies as soon as they outlived their usefulness, just like a lizard cutting off its own tail in order to live. You've been doing this for years. So... so you played me like a fool after all? Oh boy. <laughs> what was that word you used? Ally? You think that someone as foolish as him is worthy to call himself my ally? They were worthless scum, all of them. Not just Bernard and Pierre, but those Lefevers too. They always just saw me as a tool. I lost all my chances of a normal life just because I was born into their lot. Not only that, but because they wanted me to become an undercover agent, they stripped me of my name, too. I had to live in constant fear of them while they were alive. And even once they were gone, I had to continue to bury my heritage in my name. 
always worrying that their enemies would come knocking at the door. Do you know anything about what I've been through over all these years? My life as the last Lefe Bear? There's a hint of drama in the voice. Ugh. There's a hint of drama in the voice of the suddenly agitated Elodie. It feels like her anger may be some sort of bluff. I don't, and neither do I care. No one asked about your past, woman! Are, are you... Are you for real? Aren't you a Lefe Bear victim too? Elodie, you're the only one still living under the shadow of a name. That's enough. Keep your hands where I can see them and do not resist arrest. If you have more to say, save it for the interrogation room. What a joke. <laughs> what a joke! <laughs> hey! Uh, what the heck is that? Don't come any closer! What's that? Know what this is? <laughs> I've secretly planted loads of explosives in the Humane Society. Just one step closer and... Whether they're cats, dogs, or just unlucky human employees. They'll all be blown up into smithereens. <laughs> okay, woman has lost her mind. Surely, you bunch of goody two-shoes won't let that happen, right? Uh... Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Um... Um... Uh, uh, let's help Chevros. Oh, that's a 15. Oh, boy. Oh, no! No! I got a bad roll. Oh, just calm down for a minute here. That's enough! I have nothing left to say to any of you! Gardamex, get him! Well, not good. She's trying to escape. We need to end this fight as soon as possible. Okay. Busted so quickly, huh? Mm -hmm. Good thing I've already bought enough time to escape. Uh... Yeah, I don't think so. The end of the may have finally made it. She knocked out hard, but blow up behind. Of what smacked her? Phew. So I was right after all. It's easier to deal with the person causing the problem than the problem itself. I mean, you're not wrong. What was that device she had? This is it. Looks like it's just a toy. So she really was just bluffing. Guess that's probably why she suddenly flipped and knocked out Bernard. He probably knew that there were no explosives at the society. She also pretended like she had a villainous breakdown. Well, given that she never even showed her face to Bernard and Pierre, I had my doubts that she'd have gone to the society in person to plant explosives. Thank you for your help, everyone. I'll take them back for thorough questioning and find someone better to take over the Humane Society. Hmm. I might need a few statements from everybody. Would you be able to come with me? Of course, Chevros. Uh, if statements are all you need, can Linny provide them on my behalf? I still need to go back and explain some things to the crew. I also had an appointment with the Traveler before we got interrupted. Ah. Uh... You mean when I s you said I could stop by your place? Ah, so you do remember. <laughs> of course, yes, my dear. I invited you to come over to our place. Once I'm done talking with the troop, I'll make a nice cup of tea and bring Bonnie to wait for you outside of my door. Sounds lovely. Alright. <laughs> They're knocked the F out. <laughs> All right, let's go recharge with Lynette. Can we have our tea party now? Hmm. Black tea and a cute kitty. Truly the best combo for standby mode. <laughs> Want some? Cup of tea, please. No, wait, a cute kitty, please. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see she's already starting to snuggle up to you. Are you not interested in any follow-up developments from the case? Not at all. Information is indeed very important. But if you were to try to collect every piece of information you come across, your efficiency would actually decrease. Mm -hmm. Plus, 
if you just think about it. What sounds more fun? Writing a statement or enjoying a tea party? The cute kitty! Great answer. That'd be my pick, too. <laughs> Had we not run into that case, we could have spent the entire day like this. <sighs> but now, I'm running low on both time and energy. The key isn't how long you spend in standby mode. With quality time, you should be able to recharge more quickly. You're right. I can sense it. I'm recharging very quickly at the moment. I have a question, though. When did you start to, start to suspect her? Hmm. Something about her rubbed me the wrong way since the very beginning. But to be more precise, it was probably around the time when I saw Bonnie try to get away from her. Hmm, back when she tried to get close to Bonnie. Elodie tried to get close, but Bonnie deliberately dodged her. Maybe Bonnie had tried to evade her before at Pierre's base. Or perhaps Bonnie just instinctively knew that she wasn't a good person. Sounds about right. Animals can do that. Not everyone who likes cats is a good person. But if cats like you, you're probably alright. Hmm, fair enough. Humans tend to overthink things, but cats rely on their instincts, and they're pretty sharp. I mean, just look at Bonnie. She took a liking to you the moment you met. <laughs> Aww! Adorable. That's freaking adorable. Oh my goodness. That's adorable. Alright, so that was a pretty long it took an hour and a half to record that whole thing. Good lord, that is. Yeah, that's long. Okay, so we have to get different outcomes. Oh lord, this is just playing D&D. &D. Lynette's hangouts are just going to be, we're just going to be playing D&D &D for a bit. <laughs> Alright, so next time we'll probably go over back to a decision and go over here and collect this other ending. Or we'll go try to get one of these alternate endings um, from the D&D &D roles, basically. But regardless of that, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate your faces being here, and I will see you next week for the next episode. Bye-bye!